We're going to talk about the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis, right? So thyroid hormone is going to regulate your metabolism, and we'll talk about what metabolism is, okay? So the hormone that's made in the hypothalamus that initiates this whole pathway is TRH, thyroid releasing hormone. That's going to trickle through the little portal system to the anterior pituitary. So make sure you know it's anterior. And this is going to release a hormone called TSH thyroid stimulating hormone. Well, you can guess what that is or what it does. It's going to stimulate the thyroid gland. So TSH is an important marker, it, you know, especially to screen for thyroid disease. If it's out of range, high or low, well, that could indicate a possible thyroid disease. If it's high, generally a patient has hypothyroidism. If it's low, generally a patient has hyperthyroidism. It's always true, especially if they have central disease. So there's insufficiency or problem with the pituitary, you know, that gets a little beyond the scope of what we're talking about. So it's going to stimulate the thyroid. There's two thyroid hormones. There's T4 and T3. So the thyroid gland makes mostly T4. So you could say 80 to 90% T4. I'll put 90 and about 10 to 20% T3, right? You know those exact numbers, no, but at least no, making more T4 than T3. So T4, T4 stands for tetraiodothyronine. So write this here, tetra, nice long word, tetraiodothyronine. I always run out of room. And then T3 stands for tri iodothyronine. So what's important about those names? Iodo. Iodo refers to iodine. We have to have iodine to synthesize thyroid hormone. If you have a deficiency in iodine, you might develop hypothyroidism. That's why they iodize Morton salt, right? They put iodized iodine in the salt. They iodize it. Everyone uses salt. It's easy to ship to areas that had deficiencies of iodine in the soil. So they had low iodine in their diet. Well, iodized salt, everyone's going to get enough iodine. Okay, that's T4 and T3. T4 is inactive. We're going to talk about that. The other name for T4 is thyroxine. Why is that important? Why is thyroxine important? Well, it's easier name than tetraiodothyronine. And with patients with hypothyroidism, one of the treatments, the most common treatment, is given levothyroxine. Levothyroxine, the generic name is Synthroid. It's synthetic thyroid hormone. It'll treat their hypothyroidism. You can give them some T3. You can do a combination of T4, T3, something called Armor Thyroid, which is a natural thyroid gland. It's ground up and has all the thyroid hormones in there. That's beyond the scope of what we're talking about. So T3 is active. T4 is not active. So for T4 to become active, it has to go all the way to the liver. And then T4 has to get converted to T3. And there's enzymes called deiodinases. Well, tetra, four iodines. Try three. What do deiodinases do? They remove an iodine. You remove an iodine, and then you get T3. All right, boom, we get T3. So T3 is our active thyroid hormone. That's going to regulate our metabolism. Now we know there's going to be negative feedback loops. So T4 and T3 are going to negatively feedback on TRH and TSH. So that's important to understand labs. If generally, if someone has a deficiency of the thyroid, hypothyroidism, well, guess what? There's going to be less negative feedback, so TSH will be elevated. If they have hyperthyroidism, there'll be more negative feedback and TSH will be decreased. Generally, was what you see. So what does T3 do? It regulates your metabolism. Well, what the heck is metabolism? So metabolism is the rate. Basically, I'll make it really basic here. The book definition is the sum of all chemical reactions. Okay, I don't really know what that means. So the rate of converting substrate 
into ATP. So substrate into ATP. So what's substrate for energy? Fatty acids, glucose, ketones, but really we're talking about fatty acids and glucose. So if someone has a quote unquote fast metabolism, well, they can eat a whole large pizza and they don't gain any weight, right? We don't like those people. Well, that's not nice. I always say that. Anyway, so they can turn fats and carbs into ATP faster. If they do that, they're less likely to gain weight, especially fat, right? But the good thing about that is the people with fast metabolism, if they're starving, there's no resources or food around, they're going to burn their energy faster. Or some of the slow metabolism potentially could survive longer because they don't need as much food to survive. Anyway, the other thing that's metabolism, you can define it, is the rate of protein synthesis. So the rate of converting substrates, fats and carbs into ATP, and the rate of protein synthesis, that's going to define what metabolism is. Some of the fast metabolism, they do this faster, faster protein synthesis, hypothyroidism, or, or sorry, slower metabolism, they do this slower. So someone with hypothyroidism, well, guess what? Their metabolism is going to be slower. They gain weight and say, hi, I haven't changed my diet or my exercise or my activity, and I'm gaining weight, right? Also fatigued, they're tired, they can have depression. So everyone that goes to the doctor says, I'm gaining weight and depressed. Pretty nonspecific symptoms. You got to get a thyroid panel where you would check T4, T3, free T4, free T3, reverse T3, TSH, and there's more as well. So that's just some basics what you would look at. Um, TSH would just be a screening test, all right? And they would also have some things like, like um, a couple of symptoms that we would talk about. Now, hyperthyroidism, their metabolism is sped up. So guess what? They're going to be losing weight unintentionally. So they haven't changed their, their dietary intake of calories. They haven't changed their activity and they're losing weight. Sounds great. It's not great. So they're burning up fat, but they're also burning up muscle tissue because we're increasing the rate of protein synthesis. We could actually be losing muscle. So they could have some muscle wasting and muscle weakness. They're going to have anxiety instead of fatigue. They're going to actually have things like a high resting heart rate. So they could have resting tachycardia. So their heart rate could be over a hundred at rest. Um, and they could even develop some heart palpitations. So there's some basic symptoms of hypo and hyperthyroidism. The most common cause of hyperthyroidism, at least in the U.S., is Graves' disease. It's an autoimmune disease. Some causes of hypothyroidism could be Hashimoto's hypothyroiditis. So some common diseases there. So this is your thyroid pathway.